Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Husband Coaches Corner. I know I have been on a hiatus for a little while, and I'm going to get back into the swing of things, I promise. But, you know, as we start the new year off, I just wanted to drop a quick little episode to hopefully encourage all of the men out there that are maybe feeling a little down or discouraged going into the new year. I want you to know that you guys are truly capable of turning your marriage around. And that's what today's episode is about. Now, before I dive into the content, I do have to ask that uh, there is a listener. uh, His name is Joshua. He sent me a voice message. I need him to email me. If you're listening to this, Joshua, uh, send me an email and let's talk. All right. Uh, I, I really do want to hear what I, you know, what's going on and potentially what I can do to help you out. With that being said, I want today's title of the episode to be the importance of acting now. And I have no idea if anyone out there, if this resonates with them, but acting now is so important because if you wait, you're not going to make it. All right. And if you don't start acting at some point, you have to act now. So make that today. All right. So how do you act right now? The very first thing, make a decision to execute and be serious about it. All right. Don't halfway think about executing. Be serious about executing. And when it comes down to it, don't wait for permission or confirmation to do it. Don't wait for that affirmation or that confirmation from your wife to start acting on the things that you're responsible for as her husband. Just do it. All right. You show up, you do it, you get the result. And that's the way that it is. Now, the second thing of how do you act now? uh, Embrace the challenge. This isn't always going to be easy. And I don't I never want to sit here on this podcast and make it out as if. This is the easiest thing that you could ever do um, because it, it, that's not true. Unfortunately, that's not true. So embrace the challenge and expect resistance because that's just the way that it is. But you will always it, you will always get resistance when you start to act. Now, if it were easy, everyone would do it. And if everyone did it, then you wouldn't be special in the regards of you being the husband that your wife chose. All right. Whatever you think, your wife married you for a reason. So you you got to step into that affirmation that you are the man that your wife chose. And, you know, I'm not I'm not going to try and belittle anybody uh, because that's not my style. But just know that our wives, they had they had options. Right. And they chose us. So step into the affirmation that you are the chosen one. Right. And you get the uh, golden uh, harps playing in the background, all that good stuff. You are the chosen one. Your wife chose you for a reason. So step into that affirmation and start acting on loving her right now. Now. I I do like to be very practical. So what does it look like or uh, what acts should you be doing right now? And there are a lot of things, but I'm going to whittle it down to three. And then the fourth one is really just a uh, another way of, you know, just continuing the flow. All right. So the first the, the first three, tell the truth, be kind and be accountable. See, by telling the truth, you gain respect, trust, and confidence. I've talked about this many times on the podcast and former shows, and it's so important that you build these three things, right? Because when you do build these things, you start to, you start to foster a long lasting marriage that becomes more intimate. And if you don't know this or not, you can't be intimate with someone you don't trust. So if your wife doesn't trust you, guess what? You guys can't be intimate. And I'm not talking about sex. All right. Uh, There's a level of trust that can be violated and you guys can still have sex. And 
uh, you'll think that everything is fine because in the man uh, mindset, if we're having sex, then things must be good. And unfortunately, that's not always true. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to oversimplify that. But the, the moral of the story is just because you're having sex doesn't mean that you're intimate. And it doesn't mean that you've gained trust with your wife. That just means that you've gained a level of sexual intimacy that your wife is still uh, engaged with you in. Okay. Now, the reason why you want to be kind, right? It's like what our parents tell us, like be kind to people and, you know, stuff like that. Well, the reason you want to be kind to your wife is because it makes you enjoyable to be around. If you're the jerk of the husband that yells and cusses at your wife and calls her out of her name and you don't want to do anything to help her, uh, you're not enjoyable to be around. Spoiler alert. And I think if you or when you realize that, if that is what you're doing or anything to the degree where you're not being kind to your wife in, in, in any way, shape or form or some fashion, you're not being kind then your wife is likely not going to enjoy being around you and you're going to have some really hard times in your marriage. So if you're being harsh or sarcastic around your wife or to your wife, then maybe you should reevaluate how that's impacting your marriage overall. And often what I find is this is a simple thing that can be changed by most men and it is a huge game changer in their marriage And it's almost like a night and day difference. So if you want something that you can act now on uh, or act on right now, it's being kind to your wife. You will be surprised at how that works. And, you know, don't be surprised if your wife is a little surprised at you being kind to her because you're not you. She's not used to seeing that or receiving that from you. And that should be an indicator that you have uh, some deep wounds that you may have caused to your wife. And that's going to really need some healing and and may need some, uh, some counseling or just a third party to help with that circumstance or situation. All right. And then the third thing is being accountable to your wife. All right. Now this should speak for itself, but if you're not quite sure what it is that I'm trying to say here, Well, being accountable to your wife on the things that you are responsible for, right? The things that you as the husband in your marriage, whatever those things are, if you're responsible for it, then you need to do them. Now, if for whatever reason you are not performing in those areas, like being kind, maybe, maybe that's one of the areas that your wife expects you to just be responsible for, or, you know, I... I won't give more examples, but you know what you're responsible for. All right. If you are not performing to standard, your wife should feel comfortable enough to come to you and say, hey, you know what? You're really not meeting the mark here. And you shouldn't instantly turn into a defensive person, because as soon as you do that, unfortunately, that starts to build uh, distrust or discomfort. And it gives your wife the signal that she can't even tell you when there's something going on. So then you walk around oblivious to the fact that you are hurting your wife and that she's miserable and that she's ready to walk away. It's so important that you find the time or find the humility to accept the fact that you're not perfect. And when you make a mistake, your wife should feel or should be able to come to you as your other half, as your life partner, as your spouse, and say, hey, you're really messing this up. Can you uh, work on this? Or can you fix this? Or, you know, how can we uh, make this a little bit better in our relationship? All right. Now, the fourth thing that I was talking about is consistency. Now, this is something, you know, when, when we say act now, right? So, Tell the truth, be kind, and be accountable. Those three things you should do every single day in some way, shape, or form, right? There's no reason to lie to your wife. There's no reason to be mean. And there's no reason that your wife should not be able to come to you and tell you if you're doing something 
or that you can't go to your wife and ask her like, hey, what is it like to be on the other side of me? If you really want to like, <laughs> I asked my wife this question a while back and I'll be honest, it was an eye opener for me, a, a man who spends time trying to find ways to love his wife and to hear her say like, well, sometimes you're very abrupt and it's like, oh, okay, well, let's dive into that. Like, I want to know more about this because uh, there's areas, I guess, where I wasn't being as kind as I ought to have been. And I have since corrected those issues. So this is something for you to take into consideration. Ask your wife, what is it like to be on the other side of me? But then be consistent with telling the truth and being kind and remaining accountable. See, it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to build your relationship. You're not going to change your relationship uh, for the best that it could be overnight. And if you do, um, then please let me know that that happened for you because that would be a very interesting case study. But for us uh, mere mortals and, you know, the average guy, I can like pretty much guarantee that your marriage is not going to change overnight, which is why you need to do these things consistently. So that way you start to build momentum. There's something known as the compound effect. If you do something small and seemingly insignificant over time, that will develop a rapport and it will become this larger habit. Now, the compound effect works in both directions. If you do positive things, you will get a positive outcome. If you do negative things, you will get a negative outcome. So case in point, you tell your wife the truth every day, all the time on the things that you need. I mean, everything you tell your wife the truth that and I'm not going to say that that's always easy, right? Sometimes the truth is the hardest thing to share with your wife, especially if it's an embarrassing truth. But you tell the truth. And over time, that starts to build that trust, confidence, and, uh, and respect. However, if you lie, you lose trust, confidence, and respect. All right, catch that, guys. Learn to do things that are small consistently. And that's actually my, my final point for today's episode is you don't have to start with the large thing. All right. Um, I always go to weightlifting or, you know, just working out. I enjoy lifting weights. I enjoy working out. So this is just my thing. All right. Welcome to my life. Um, when I go to the gym, I usually don't start with my max weight, which isn't that much, by the way, uh, I usually start with about 60 and sometimes even 40% of what my max weight is. And I'm a pretty big dude. So when I go into the gym and I pick up the 25 pound dumbbells and I'm sitting on the, uh, on the free bench or the flat bench, and I'm just pressing 25 pound dumbbells, I get some looks People look at me and they're like, man, what are you doing? And for me, that's my warm up. It's the way that I start my workout and it gets my mindset. So when I get to the 75 pound dumbbells, I'm ready to go. All right. This is the reason why you want to start small and you want to be consistent. Because when you get to the bigger problems, when you get to the bigger challenges, the bigger issues, the bigger situations, you're going to be able to perform because you got the reps under your belt. Now, I know I just got like super coachy uh, there and, you know, got a little hype, but hopefully that resonated with you. All right. Because it's important for you to start now, because if you wait until tomorrow or the next day or a month later, you're going to end up in 2024 or 2025 and you're going to be like, man, I should have started back when I had the opportunity to start. And unfortunately, that's when the compound effect works negatively against you and you're not going to be able to uh, move in 
to a better, more enjoyable, and a reliable, confident marriage. Let me give you these uh, three things that you can do that are small. So the first one, pull your phone out, send your wife a text and tell her that you love her and tell her why you love her. Now, for some of you, that may be a little hard to figure out, like, why do I love my wife? Well, if that if that's where you're having a challenge, then I would encourage you to get a notebook and every day write down one thing that you care for or that you enjoy about your wife. All right. Observe those things throughout the day. Write it at night. Write it in the morning. It, however you choose to do it, but write them nonetheless. All right. The second thing that you can do, plan a short 30 minute date with your wife. This could be something like, hey, we're going to pack some sandwiches in a bag, go out to the park, sit on the grass, eat a sandwich for a little bit. Uh, this could be, hey, I'm coming home from work or we're going to meet for uh, coffee. We're going to go out for breakfast, uh, whatever it is, like take 30 minutes. All right. This doesn't have to be this grand gesture that it, it just needs to be 30 minutes of uh, time with you and your wife. Don't include the kids. Don't include the dog. Don't include your best friend, her best friend. It's not a double date. It's a date between you and your wife. Okay. You and your wife, 30 minutes. And then the last one, do something simple that will resonate with your wife and that she'll appreciate. This could be cooking or ordering, ordering out. If you are not a good cook, uh, that's perfectly fine. Just go buy some food and, you know, say, Hey, look, we're don't worry about cooking or cleaning dishes tonight. We got food, uh, cleaning up a little bit around the house. If you, if you know that there's something that bothers your wife about the house, go ahead and correct it, uh, clean it, whatever, organize it. And then you could also rub her feet or her neck. And that's going to be, uh, just perfect all on its own, rubbing her feet or her neck. And then the last thing is you could bring her flowers and regardless of how you feel, because I personally am not a fan of bringing flowers to my wife, other than the fact that my wife loves to receive flowers from me. So I bring her flowers from time to time. It's not a, it's, it's not a very common occurrence. I'll be honest. But it is definitely something that I do because my wife, she loves when I bring her flowers. It brightens up her day like almost nothing else I do. And other than my own stupid stubbornness, uh, that's the reason I don't bring her the flowers. So hopefully all of those things, they made sense. And I know that this was a very short and almost rapid fire episode so please go back and, and listen to it. Um, and if you ever want to get a hold of me, uh, check the show notes. My email address is in there. It's chris at marriagedrills.com. So I always encourage people to reach out to me over email. Uh, I do check my email and I do respond to my emails. Now, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of getting the coaching um, back up and running. But if, you know, for the guys that have been reaching out to me, I have been responding to them and helping them the best way that I can, uh, in lieu of the formal, uh, coaching program that I hosted throughout the year of 2022 and even before then, but I'm working on a new program that will allow me to, uh, be more present and engaging with my family and also serving the husbands, the men that are, you know, really trusting me to help them uh, become better men and husbands uh, overall. So I, I truly am appreciative of everyone who is just, you know, reaching out and asking for my assistance on, on that. And then lastly, if you ever want to support this podcast, which there's no obligation for anyone to do, but if you would like to partner with me as you know, we reach out and uh, build content to love the men around the globe, because this is an international podcast, that's how the reach goes, 
then consider being a monthly supporter. It's only four ninety nine a month, and all of the proceeds go directly into developing the curriculum and paying for the website and the hosting and the URL and just everything that I need in order to run the overall business side of the uh, coaching aspect. All right. I don't take a, a, a paycheck out of it. And this is not my my full time job. This is what I do on the side to care for those who are really looking for some help and assistance. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go over to the anchor page, which will be listed in the show notes of this episode and every other episode. Um, or you can just send me an email and say, hey, how can I support? And I will be more than happy to help you with that if that's something that you're feeling led to do. So until the next time that we meet on whatever platform you are listening, then I want you to find a way to love your wife every day. Peace.